principal design verification engineer on Microsoft's custom silicon development team. He has over 38 years of experience in hardware design verification, functional modeling, and engineering productivity. And over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for that introduction. Um, I think we're short on time, so let's get started. Hopefully, you've all. Dave, it looks like you've accidentally muted yourself. Okay, how's that? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, as, as I was saying, I was thanking Michael for that introduction and trusting that you all had a chance to read the abstract that was published on the website. So I won't uh, try to set things up any further. I'll just launch into a an outline of my talk here. First, I'd like to give you some back or background and context, then talk about the problems we were trying to solve. Um, and then I'll discuss a little bit this concept of trying to kill two birds with one stone, or at least moving in that direction. I'll talk a little bit about what I've learned about UVM test bench code generators. Uh, I'll give you some status and observations, then I'll talk about uh, the work that we are, are continuing to do and looking to do in the future. So first of all, by way of context, um, this is going back quite a, quite a ways, actually, maybe a decade, when micro, Microsoft first started getting involved with the silicon development. We relied mostly on third parties for IP design and verification. Our role was mainly as an architect integrator and system validator. Um, however, we eventually started doing our own internal uh, RTL design and verification. And unfortunately, in those battle days, the RTL was thrown over the proverbial wall to verification um, without really any upfront testing. Well, happily, we don't do that anymore. Um, minimally, our RTL designers will come up with a, a very rudimentary test bench on their own. You know, it, basically, you know, a, a, a module-based environment with maybe a big initial block. Uh, maybe file-driven stimulus and expected responses, or um, maybe just some manual checking, dumping waves and looking at them. But at least there was some level of sanity checking going on for the design. However, uh, our, our better designers will invest quite heavily at this stage, and, and here's a picture of an actual test bench. Um, it, it isn't really class-based system Verilog, but he did make use of, you know, Cues and, and dynamic arrays and various other things that you can, non synthesizable things you can do. Uh, pretty sophisticated test bench, and it took them quite a while to come up with it. So, they can, uh, some of these test benches can be extensive and expensive, but um, uh, it's usually the rare case. And so, the, we would have the spot in our development program where you know the RTL would be handed off to the professional verification engineer for official what I would call sign-off verification at the IP level. And so I'm just showing here a very simplified view of a of a typical unit level EVM test bench. Um, one of the things I want to point out here is our, our usual custom is to have the scoreboard. Uh, consult a golden reference model, usually supplied by an architect, uh, by way of the DPI, usually written in C++. So with this um, paradigm, we were seeing some problems. Um, first of all, as I showed you uh, on, a, on a, two of those the previous slides, the, the sophistication of the bring up test bench varies greatly. So, so the effectiveness of really ringing out those initial bugs um, is all over the map. So generally, there's a low level of coverage achieved by the designer's test bench. And, and uh, in the worst case, we had this ugly cross dependency where, uh, you know, the verification engineer is, is trying to bring up their own piece of complex code, namely the UVM test bench. And so you'd like to have stable RTL to bring that up. Um, however, it, 
it would be handy for the designer to have a stable test bench to flesh out the RTL. So in the, in the worst case, we ended up trying to debug the, the nasty integration of three big chunks of non-trivial code, namely the RTL, the UVM test bench, and uh, the C++ golden reference model. And so um, sometimes, quite often, actually, we, we would find that the design team really had to get involved at this integration stage of the, of the dot into the UVM test bench and spend a lot of time debugging really issues that had nothing to do with the RTL and supporting the verification engineer. So like it or not, our designers uh, would start to become familiar with what a UVM test bench looks like. Um, and in the worst case, we would have some verification engineers who really could have um, um, done better to understand the design more. A, th a third uh, issue is sometimes these IP blocks are pretty complex to sort of configure and set up, you know, program the, the control registers and, and uh, lookup tables and so forth correctly. And so it's kind of hard uh, for many of these IPs to describe and document just how to do that in a valid way without working examples. So this is the, the, the approach we started to think about. We're going to do a UVM test bench anyway. Can we bring UVM to the designer at the bring up stage, make it accessible and palatable to the designer? Um, so we were going to see if we could do that. Um, so minimally, uh, we need to provide the designers with a basic working understanding of UVM, you know, just enough knowledge to be dangerous, quote unquote. Um, a key here, though, is to not burden the designer with writing those hundreds of, of, of lines of code that comprise a UVM test bench. Uh, if you think about a UVM test bench, most of the code is pretty boilerplate. It's uninteresting. Um, so what we really wanted to do is figure out if we could find a tool such that the, the designer would only have to manually author the, what I will call the differentiating code, the interesting code in the test bench. So um, if we're going to have the designer use a tool to try to generate a UVM test bench, that tool's got to be like the easiest one you could imagine um, because d most designers don't want verification to be their day job. They, they just want to be able to uh, get a test bench to bring up their designs quickly. Uh, so part of that too would be to um, not only provide a tool that's easy to use, but have some inputs for the tool, templates if you will, reusable templates uh, for maybe a set of common interfaces that are going to be used uh, on a set of IPs. Just have them in stock and ready for uh, the designer to just choose from, from in a library. And then here's the killing two birds with one stone part. If, if the designer has put together a UVM test bench, you know, it'd be really smart of us if we could have the verification engineer uh, leverage that test bench into the official sign-off test bench. So we imagine that there's a continuum of, of leverage here. Um, minimally, the designer's test bench would be just a mere example. Oh, look at that. Isn't that interesting? Moving along uh, to the right, um, maybe the verification engineer would copy-paste code snippets like the, the, that differentiating code that I talked about. And in the best case, um, we would have a full handoff. In other words, um, the design engineer would develop the test bench, evolve the test bench to a certain point, and then just say, here, here's the code, start here, and keep running with it. OK, so let's talk a little bit about uh, test bench uh, creation tools. Um, the first tool that we uh, used was developed internally. We called it Test Bench Creator, and uh, really pretty rudimentary. It 
it uh, works by um, having a set of input files, uh, which are really just, uh, you know, par parameterized uh, agents and VIPs, um, and maybe a generic a set of generic templates, and then you run the script, and it, and in some sense, just kind of copies those from the left to the right, doing massive textual substitution in key places. Um, but then it's understood, and you only do that once. You run the tool once. Uh, and then it's understood that you have, you're not done. You have to manually edit uh, uh, the output, maybe even add to the output uh, to supply that differentiating code. Uh, so this, this worked pretty well for us, but uh, we found some limited flexibility. Uh, we were starting to enter design domains for which we didn't really have a good set of templates over here. So I, I wanted something more flexible and powerful. Uh, which brings us to the, the the second and present tool that I'm playing with. Uh, this is uh, Dulos's uh, so-called easier UVM generator. Uh, that's free from them, open source. Um, I latched onto this and uh, enhanced it quite a bit. There were actually just plain old bugs in it. Plus, uh, I made some key enhancements. Um, but but the way this thing works is uh, the input. Um, is really a set of what I'll call control files. They call them template files, but that term's misleading. Um, so these are files that guide uh, the script, the tool. Um, but the key, the key most interesting part of this tool is um, up front, uh, the, the designer would supply code fragments, the, so that differentiating code that I talked about that's inserted into the code up front so that the code that you get out is is done. It's, it's, a, it's a test bench. Um, there's nothing more to write because you've written it up front. Um, so it's, you know, it's algorithmic generation guided by control files rather than just copying templates from, from the left to the right. Um, so as such, it supports uh, what you could call a run always methodology. You can just run this continuously. What you develop are, are the inputs um, to the tool. Um, as a matter of fact, in our current flow, that's the only thing we check into the version control system. We, we're not actually checking in the test bench itself. Uh, so it's, this thing is extremely powerful and flexible. Um, you know, out of the box, the tool is, is, a, is a clean slate. Um, it's not biased by any, um, you know, set of templates that you might or might not have in stock. Another interesting thing about this tool is it incorporates uh, this really pretty cool open source generic scoreboard from Sciosil. I don't know if you uh, had a chance to look at that, but it's it's a pretty uh, pretty cool way to do a scoreboard. Oh, did I mean, how, why do I keep getting muted? Um, did you guys hear most of that? Yes, we did. That was just your five minute warning. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, yeah, we're coming down the home stretch here. Um, so what's our current status? Well, despite the original vision of, you know, designers using the test bench generator, that, that first test bench generator that we had uh, was never actually used by designers, but the verification team latched onto it. They rewrote it in Python. They continue to enhance and maintain it. And, you know, they're having good success with it. Um, however, it's, it's not universally adopted in all geographies and all areas of the org chart. There's actually a competitor um, uh, mentors UVMF framework, a UVM framework tool. Um, that, that there's a contingent within Microsoft using. And, and you know, it's similar to Test Bench Creator in that it's run once, uh, but it's very powerful and, uh, and pretty famous. Um, we've only, we're still sort of in a beta stage um, with, with the easier UVM generator. Um, and uh, I'm continuing to work with new designs and new projects to try to get this thing ramped up. Um, it turns out some of our um, 
IP design engineers are, are really pretty UVM savvy. They, they used to be verification engineers or, or maybe had an OVM background. Um, and so that there was one designer that uh, did quite well with it. Um, but we're still uh, actively seeking and engaging with new users and designs, and we're, we're continuing to enhance and evolve the tool itself. Uh, we also did do that training, consulting, and support. Uh, support. We had a, a run at it. Uh, we hired a famous training company to give us a crash course on system Verilog and UVM, and unfortunately, it was a pretty big crash. Um, it was, <laughs> we just kind of crammed too much into five days. Uh, so we're rethinking that. I'm even toying with the idea of just doing some training, develop some simple training on my own. So our work is not done. Uh, we're continuing to work on it. This is more of a However, in doing this work, I do have some observations. Um, if you think about it, there are opposing goals here. We, we would like a tool or a, a flow that designers can use that, that's easy. It's not that expensive to develop your bring up test bench. And yet we want UVM class effectiveness, or at least to approach that at the bring up stage. So those are kind of opposing goals. Um, which is to say, you know, UVM is a heck of a thing. I mean. We write books and sing songs about it. I mean, it's it's a it's a big deal. It's it's uh, a lot of people. Uh, it's their entire career. It's their entire job during the day. So we can't expect all designers to become UVM experts, but we can help them uh, learn uh, enough to become dangerous for their bring up work. Um, and a and a big key about that is you don't have to type in all those lines of code yourself, uh, code generators can really significantly mitigate the development costs and encourage adoption, but they're not a panacea. Um, now the two birds with one stone holy grail here is, uh, is not necessarily just a technical challenge. Um, we're, we're thinking about organizational changes, maybe different temporary reporting structures to help make this happen. Maybe even different talent acquisition development goals. You know, when we're hiring for a, an RTL designer, maybe we want them to have some object-oriented background or some some actual experience with the class-based side of System Verilog. And there are also program management changes that might help. So, uh, what are we working on now and in the future? Well, I'm I'm in active. Uh, discussions slash negotiations with the verification team to see if we can consolidate our test bench generators, you know, converge on one or maybe uh, latch onto another one like EVMF. Um, continuing to work on increasing adoption of this approach among designers. Um, it's, it's not mandatory that you use UVM for your bring up test bench, but we're trying to encourage it. Um, we're also trying to figure out uh, how our use of high-level synthesis, which we do use uh, uh, quite often, actually, affects our two birds with one stone roadmap. Um, you know, minimally, I'm I'm looking at enhancing the generator to support the UVM for HLS technique that we uh, we just, we talked about in our DVCon 2018 paper, and there are also tools and flows from our HLS vendor. Um, that we need to take a closer look at. The other thing we're aware of is that UVM isn't the be-all and end-all. Um, uh, we're actively pursuing uh, formal model checking at the bring-up stage um, and also thinking about this portable stimulus standard and the tools that have come out that support that. So thank you for your attention.